Hello, Integrated Math One. Welcome to lesson 1.1.4. It is the last lesson of our unit. And so we're kicking it off on page 61, M1-61. That's where we're at right now. We have a couple of warm-ups. We've got A, we've got B as well. So I would like you to sketch a graph and write an equation for each function. And there's no right, there, there's, there, I, I, there are wrong answers, um, but there's no one right answer here. There are a lot of right answers here. So see what you can do. Now that we've talked about our function families a little bit, we're going to dig a little deeper today, but now that we've talked about our function families a little bit, Let's see if we can press this a little further. Go ahead and hit pause to work this out, your warm-ups A and B, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. So let's start with A. That's a decreasing linear function. Let me grab my pen here. Um, decreasing linear function. Well, we know that linear functions look like f of x equals ax plus b. We know that. We've done that before. But I want it to be a decreasing linear function. So that means that slope, that number in front of my x, needs to be a negative number. So you can pick any negative number you like to plug in for a, but in order to make sure that thing is decreasing, that needs to be a negative. And of course, b can be any number you want it to be. Now, I wanted it to easily fit on the graph. So I chose f of x equals negative 2x plus 1. You may have picked some different numbers, but so long as this number next to your x is negative, your slope is negative, it'll be a decreasing linear function. So I picked this one just because it was easy to graph. So here's my y-intercept. It's at 1. Woohoo! And of course, it's going down 2 and then over 1. And then I will go ahead and connect the dots. La, 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 la. Boom. There's my line. I made a decreasing linear function. Yours might look different. That's okay. It can look different. But you want, if you want a linear function, we have to use this form. And if I want it decreasing, that A value has to be negative. If I would wanted an increasing linear function, I should have kept that guy positive. That's how it goes. Um, this is an increasing exponential function for part B. So for part B, I was like, okay, okay, exponential function, that's where we get the whole like, there's a variable in my, there's a snake in my boots, there's a variable in my, in my uh, exponent. So you just need to pick a number for B. Because it's increasing, I want to pick a number greater than 1. So I'm going to pick a number greater than 1, and I just picked 3. It sounded like a good number. You may have picked a different number, and that's okay. So what this means, because um, I wanted to be an increasing exponential function, so that number needed to be um, greater, I'll make a little note here, greater than one. If I had been told it was a decreasing exponential function, I should have picked something between zero and one for the base of my exponent here. So like a half would have done it or a third, something along those lines that would make your function be a decreasing exponential function. Um, so this means um, exponential functions always hit at 1. That's a discussion for another time. You could use Desmos to help you graph. That's totally cool. I know if I plug in a 1, I'm going to get a 3. And I know it's going to do the upward curve thing, right? That this is an exponential function. It's going to come low and then swing up. So um, there it is, all in its prettified glory. It's so beautiful. Aww. So let's start working on recognizing our function families. We have five function families. Now we're going to start focusing in on recognizing them when we see them. Whether we see the graph or just the equation, we need to start figuring out how to recognize our function families. So you're going to be recognizing similar characteristics among function families, recognizing different characteristics among function families, determining a function type if you're given certain characteristics. I Like we were just doing, right? 
I want it linear, I want it decreasing. So what does that look like? And of course, you guys have identified key characteristics of graphs. How can the key characteristics help you sketch the graph of a function? Now you might want to go back and look at some of those notes that we took because it wasn't part of your book, but if you recall in the last lesson at the end, we kind of consolidated it and we made like a whole list, like this is the function families, these are the things we look for in function families, all right? You might want to go back at that lovely little, little bit that we made at the end of our last video in order to help you out. So, name that function. You've sorted graphs according to their function family. So now let's consider which function families have the given characteristics. So off to the side here in the little box, and you have this box in your book on page 62. Um, here are our function families, right? We had the linear guys, right? These are the guys that we go up or down. We increase or decrease or we're constant. They were straight lines, right? All that good stuff. We had the exponential ones. I'm going to grab another color. Our exponential guys were like, we swing up, we increase or we decrease. These are terribly drawn, but these guys are curves, right? These are not lines. We have our quadratic functions. Our quadratic functions, those were the parabolas. So they either increase, then decrease, or they decrease, then increase. They have a maximum, uh, pardon me, a maximum or a minimum, so watch out. Um, if you see a positive x squared, it's pointing up and you have a minimum. If you see a negative x squared, it's pointing down, you have a maximum. We have our linear absolute value functions. Those were the ones, I want my purple, those are the ones that make Vs, right? We got a V pointing up or a V pointing down. And you're not gonna be surprised to discover if your V, if it's positive absolute value at the front, it's gonna be opening up. If it's a negative absolute value at the front, it's gonna be opening down. No surprises there. But again, minimum, maximum. And last but not least, our linear piecewise functions. I don't really have like a specific drawing it, but piecewise functions literally is what it sounds like. It's pieces of functions, like a chunk and a chunk and a chunk and a chunk. And I don't know. They do whatever they want to do. Depends on what paces I've been given. So I have a whole bunch of characteristics here for you on page 62. And I would like you to tell me which function families can be described by the characteristic provided. And you have the list, linear, exponential, quadratic, linear absolute value, or linear piecewise. Go ahead and go for it. There's often, there can be more than one function family, by the way, that falls into this category. So go ahead and hit pause, write down which function families have that characteristic, and then hit play to keep going. So part A says the graph is a smooth curve. We want curves. We want curves, not lines. Well, if you look at what we did over here, our exponential and our quadratic function families, those have curves. Yes, they do. Um, part B says the graph is made up of one or more straight lines. Well, if we're going for straight lines, and sorry, I lost my pictures. They didn't follow me. Um, we are straight lines as we're linear, uh, linear absolute value and linear piecewise, which I guess makes sense. They all had the word linear, so I guess they all were made up of straight lines. That feels fair. Feels about right. The graph increases or decreases over the entire domain. It does not do both. It can only do one or the other. Um, the only function families that did that were the linear and the exponential. Those are the guys that only increased or only decreased. They didn't turn back around on themselves. None of that was going on. Ooh, the graph has an absolute maximum or minimum. If you recall, if you recall, our quadratic guys and our linear absolute value functions, right? Our parabolas and our Vs, they got a top point or a bottom point. They get one or the other. Now, for number two, one or more characteristics have been added to the graphical description of each function. So name the possible function families. Again, I have a couple of these for you. Note, it's a little more specific now. It's 
narrowing it down. So go ahead and name the function family for each one of these and then hit pause when you're ready to check your work. Or pardon me, hit pause to write it down, hit play when you're ready to check your work. All right, I want the graph that has an absolute minimum or absolute maximum. So if it's minimum or maximum, we've narrowed it down to these two, right? These are our options. Oh, and it's a smooth curve. If it's a curve, it's got to be quadratic. Yeah. Part B, the graph either increases or decreases. Okay, so if it can only increase or decrease, it's one of these two, right? Linear or exponential. Um, so the graph either increases or decreases over the entire main domain and is a straight line. Exponentials are curves. In order to be a straight line, psh, that's got to be linear function. All right, part C, the graph is a smooth curve and either increases or decreases over the entire domain. Well, first of all, if I see curves, I'm like, all right, it has to be exponential or quadratic. These are our two options. The other ones were all straight lines. So it's one of these two guys. And then it says it increases or decreases over time, not both. That means... It's got to be exponential functions. One more. I got another. The graph has either an absolute minimum or an absolute maximum, has symmetry, and is made up of two straight lines. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, absolute minimum or an absolute maximum, it has to be either quadratic or linear absolute value, right? has symmetry. Well, quadratics make parabolas that I can fold, so they have symmetry, and linear absolute values make Vs, but I can also fold those to be symmetrical, so that wasn't very helpful. Oh, made up of two straight lines. What? It's straight lines. That has to be our V. That has to be the linear absolute value functions. Yay! So each function family has certain graphical behaviors with some behaviors common among different function families, right? Some have curves, some have straight lines, some have maximums and minimums, some don't. So they do share some behaviors. But notice, the more specific characteristics that are given, the more specifically you can name that function. Mm -hmm. So you've been introduced to several function families, linear, exponential, quadratic, linear absolute value, and linear piecewise. Let's revisit the first lesson, 1.1.1. We're going to go back. A picture's worth a thousand words. Each of the scenarios in that lesson represents one of these function families. Yeah, yeah. Um, describe how each scenario represents a function. Keeping in mind what a function means, what a function is, go ahead and hit pause to tell me why these guys are functions, and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. So if you look all the way back at lesson 1.1.1, you would have realized, hey, each scenario describes a function because there's only one unique output value for each input value. So you have a table on the following pages. Um, there are several things you're going to do with this table. You're going to complete the table to describe each scenario. So you'll notice the scenarios are from way, 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 way back at the very beginning of this unit. And for each one, I want you to identify the appropriate function family under the scenario name. And I'm going to change this up a little bit. Instead of domain, don't get me wrong, it's important. I would like you to identify um, if it's continuous or discrete. That's what I want. I want to change that just a little bit. So instead of domain, I want you to tell me if it's continuous or discrete, all right? And then in the last little chunk there, and they have the graphs there for you, 
I would like you to describe the graphical behavior as increasing, decreasing, constant, or if it's a combination, be specific. Don't just write combination. Tell me it's increasing then decreasing or it's increasing then constant. Be specific if it's a combination, all right? So when we're looking, asking about that graphical behavior, increasing, decreasing, constant, or maybe it's doing more than one of those things, that's what we wanna know. So go ahead and hit pause to fill in your table, remembering that instead of domain, remember that we're, we're going to be like uh, discrete or continuous, right? These are the questions we have or continuous. So we're changing that one. We're changing that one just a little bit. Um, so go ahead, tell me the function family. Tell me what family it is. Tell me the function family. Tell me if it's discrete or continuous. Describe the graphical behavior, increasing, decreasing, all that stuff. Go ahead and hit pause to fill in your table and then hit play when you're ready to check your work. Let's start with the daredevil situation. I'm looking at this and it looks like I've got a curve until he hits the water and then it's a straight line. I have pieces of functions. It's a piecewise function. It's not a linear piecewise function, but it is a piecewise function. I have a piece and then a piece. So it's a piecewise function. It is continuous, right? It's not dotted. It's not like dot, 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 dot. It's a continuous function. For the graphical behavior, um, it's decreasing, always decreasing, which is fair. The dude jumped off a cliff. He probably was only going to go down and it really seemed bouncing back up midair. That's awkward. For our Something's Fishy, where we were draining the aquarium, you can see that's just constant rate, right? So this is a linear function. It is also continuous and also decreasing. Yeah, we're just draining the water out of the tank. Fair enough. Next up, uh, this is the smartphone, but is it a smart deal? Remember, we were suspicious of our cousin trying to make money off of us with the phone. I'm looking at this bad boy and it's like, whoa. Now I can't see off to the left, but that is increasing super fast. I'm gonna say that's an exponential function. Your sketchy cousin and his, I'm gonna charge you a dollar and then I'll double it afterwards. Don't trust your cousin. Um, the, uh, we said none instead of domain, um, we said continuous or discrete. This is definitely continuous because it's not a bunch of points. It's all connected, nice smooth curve. And for the graphical behavior, it is only increasing. That's it. Now, we may or may not have gotten to all of these, but you certainly have the graph matched up for you. So if we're looking for our can't wait to hit the slopes, um, you can take a look. It goes up. Remember, this was uh, the, the chairlift, right? And he got stuck on the chairlift. Boo. Um, so he's going up, got stuck on the lift, and then it kept on going up. You remember this? Yeah. This is a piecewise function, linear piecewise, right? We have a piece, a piece, a piece. This is a linear piecewise function because it's pieces of lines. So we call it linear piecewise. It is continuous. Now, this one isn't always increasing though, right? So I'm going to say this function is increasing and constant because it's increasing, then constant, then increasing again. So this is what I mean by a combination. I didn't just write combination. I said it's increasing and constant. It's doing both things. It's magic. We're cutting rope in half, if I recall correctly. Um, look at this. Swope down. That's an exponential function. It's getting, I mean, we keep cutting half, cutting half, cutting half, cutting half. It's getting really small, really fast with our rope. So that means it is continuous, and that means this is decreasing, to be sure. For our baton twirling, right, she chucked it up in the air, and it gave her two seconds to do her little twirl and then catch it, do her double twirl. Um, it is totally a parabola, a uh, quadratic. Yeah, that's very much a parabola, isn't it? Chuck it up in the air and back down again. That's a quadratic function. It's continuous and it's increasing and decreasing, right? It increases then decreases. It's doing both, so I had to put both. 
cold weather, right? This is the whole deal that with certain temperatures, people come into the uh, to the resort. But of course, at some point we top out, can't fit any more people in there. In case you haven't already noticed, that's a linear piecewise function. I have pieces of lines. Um, is continuous. And that means it's increasing and constant, right? We hit a certain point where the resort is full. Nobody else can come in. That's a constant. And last but not least, the jelly bean challenge. Um, this was the graph that we decided went with it. It's got that V shape. Do you see that? That's a V shape. That's a linear absolute value function. It is continuous and it's decreasing then increasing. So I did have to put both of those down, decreasing and increasing. There you go. Um, we're gonna shift gears a little bit though. Let's go to page 66. In this activity, you will write equations and sketch a graph based on the characteristics. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna use the given characteristics to create an equation and sketch a graph, kind of like we did on the warm-up. And, and so here are our little equation functions, right? Ax plus b, a times b to the x plus c, right? Here are the, here's our basic structure. So when creating your equation, Use A, B, and C values, and you can put any numbers in here that you like, but to make it easier to graph, <laughs> to make it easier to graph, you are asked that whatever numbers you plug in for A, B, and C, you can plug in any numbers, but we're asking, can you keep those numbers between negative three and three? Um, that would be much appreciated. It'll make it easier to graph. I'm just saying it makes it easier to graph. You're also welcome to use Desmos for now if you want help graphing, that's totally fine. Um, do not use any of the functions we've previously used. Come up with something new. Um, keep in mind that also means that yours are probably gonna look different than mine, and that's okay. So go ahead, you've got a couple of these here. They have some descriptions for you, so decide if that should be a linear function or an exponential function. Um, decide what numbers you want to plug in based on the criteria they gave. Again, those stick between negative three and three. That'll be better for you. And then go ahead and graph it. And again, you're welcome to use Desmos to help you get the graphs down. I'm not going to judge too much. Go ahead and hit pause to work these out. And then hit play when you're ready to just keep the discussion going. All right, so part A, exponential. All right, so right away, I know it's an exponential, guy. So I know it's a function, it's exponential. So I know that I want to use this, right? I want to use that one. Um, it does say it's continuous, great. And it says it's decreasing. Oh, well, if it's decreasing, what that means is this guy right here, this guy right here needs to be... Um, and I'm going to phrase this better. It needs to be between 0 and 1. Now, you can pick any number you want to make that between 0 and 1. That is up to you. Me, personally, I'm just going to pick a half. That sounds good. And then for my other numbers, meh, I'll use a 3 and a negative 1. Why not? And then I use Desmos. Boo! Now again, your graph probably looks different than mine. Your equation probably looks different than mine. But I did want to make sure it was decreasing, so I did want to make sure that my base was between 0 and 1. Otherwise, we were pretty free with the other numbers. Create an equation and sketch a graph that is linear, discrete, increasing, and a function. All right, if it's linear, we're using this bad boy. Um, if it's increasing, that means I need that guy to be positive. I need my A value to be positive. Otherwise, you're pretty free to pick what you like. So I decided to use f of x equals 2x minus 2. Now, it does say discrete, and that's where I wrote where x is an integer because it needs to be discrete. I don't want a solid line. I want dots. I want points, undisconnected points. So my graph looked like this. I'm like dot, point, 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 point. So I did not connect my points because it did say to make it discrete. So the fact that it was discrete 
means that it's going to be points. It's going to be unconnected points. You know that. You knew that. Oh, my. Create an equation and sketch a graph that is not a function. Continuous and a straight line. Were you challenged by this one? Did this one leave you going, hmm, hmm, hmm? Did you get some furrowed brows going on there? Um, you know, the only thing I can think of that's not a function but is still a straight line is a vertical line. Ah, ah. So the equation I use is x equals 1, and then I just made a vertical line right through 1 on my x-axis. You could have picked a different number. If you did x equals 5 or x equals negative 2, those would have worked fine as well. That was a tricky one. And if you got it, good job. I'm impressed. As always, guys, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you found this useful. You got questions, concerns, email me. Come talk to me. Come see me during office hours. I'm here to help, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.